All right, how to make an end grain cutting board with an intricate V-carve inlay. Uh, as you can see, I'm not in my wood shop right now. I am on location uh, here in Orcas Island, one of the San Juan Islands in Washington State. Uh, for my family, it's our favorite spot. For about 10 to 15 years, we've been coming here each summer. Uh, I also take my fifth graders uh, as a teacher uh, to the island for camping and wanted to make a piece that really encompasses the island to have back at home, as well as a gift uh, for our family friends who, who let us use their home each summer. So make quite a few pieces, including this end grain inlay board with some great engraving on the back with a personal thank you. Just a special project. One of the great things about woodworking is you can make really personal and customized projects. So this video, it is gonna be a tutorial going through the steps, how I made these pieces. You can use those timestamps if you're looking for something in particular or just watch the whole thing. But here you have it, how to make an end grain board with wood inlay. So first up, I went ahead and cut my walnut to size. Now I'm doing this just because I find it easier to manage. Uh, has some really rustic pieces here that I needed to clean up, and I think it just gave a much better result. So uh, this tabletop joiner, this bench joiner is fantastic. Uh, able to clean the faces, get a good flat face, and then run it through the planer and uh, make sure that it's co-planer. Both sides are nice and flat. Uh, really important for end grain boards to get a really, really uh, squared piece. So got everything nice and squared, uh, ready to go, and then it was time uh, to cut them to length. Uh, for this one, I went ahead and cut everything in one and a half inch strips here at the table saw. Um, it's just a measurement I went up with. Uh, with the end grain boards, it's great to have multiple, uh, you know, different lines. It adds a lot more interest. So the more pieces, you know, the more interesting it's going to look. So I got all these pieces for my first glue up. I'm using Tight Bond 3. It is uh, what I use for all my cutting boards. I always think you can never have too much, you know, it'll squeeze out, but you know, lots of glue, get it on. Uh, for these, I was able to use the roller because everything was the same height and then throwing it in the parallel clamps. If you don't have parallel clamps, I think pipe clamps work just fine. Uh, you don't need a spring for the big expensive parallel clamps, um, but I have them and they work great. They have a lot of power. So this is just a standard end grain cutting board glue up. Uh, if you want really lots more details on cutting boards, I have a cutting board 101 video and other ones on how to get a great glue up with lots and lots of tips. Uh, for this, it doesn't need to sit forever. I usually give about four hours or so, and then I scrape off uh, all those glue dots that come out. It's easier than waiting a day. Uh, otherwise, it's rock solid glue. And why this is really helpful, it lets the piece sit kind of flat as you surface it. Because this was a really wide cutting board, it's too wide for my planer. And so I'm using a CNC. You could certainly use a router sled and other tools to flatten it, uh, a drum sander. You don't have to have these big fancy tools, but I have it and I'm using it. Um, for the flattening, this really big bit was super duper helpful. Um, cut down on the time a lot, uh, especially with all the different flattening passes. And I still got great results, even though it's a, a bigger bit. Uh, and so you could use a quarter inch bit and some people do that just to prevent tear out. But as long as your settings are low, it's gonna go from three and a half hours to 13 minutes. All right, I have a flat face. I'm gonna test it here on the table saw. I got no rock, no play, it's, it's dead flat. At this point, the other side I could send through the drum sander, but I'm just gonna go ahead and use the CNC again to flatten. But once both sides are flattened, then go ahead and cut your strips. Uh, this is the thickness of your board. I went again with about a, an inch and a half thick board. And then I flip it all over, take a look, kind of alternating, seeing what pattern I like, and really happy with just all of that sapwood contrast in the walnut, uh, looks great. Again, because all of these pieces are the same thickness, I can just throw the glue on and, and uh, roll it on. Again, I do recommend using lots of glue. I know it feels like a waste, but you don't want to have gaps. And so uh, this works great. This glue up is really important. You want to get everything as aligned as possible. Uh, you also want it as flat as possible to cut down on time for flattening your board later. So definitely uh, want to make sure you have a good alignment. You might want to use calls. Uh, I talk about that in my brick board, my end grain board, and some of my other videos um, in a little bit better detail. 
I went ahead and made a test board, uh, another small little board. Again, this is all end grain, uh, flipped it over uh, just to practice out. And here I'm doing some hard maple. This maple is gonna be the inlay. Again, it all has to be end grain, uh, so I don't have you know wood movement over, over time. So gluing that one up. And now that the end grain board has uh, you know been glued, I'm gonna flatten it. Now flattening, you don't wanna send this through the planer. Some people do, lots of reasons not to. Again, I have talked about that in my other videos, but drum sander or a CNC uh, does great work. Time for the inlay. Uh, this is a 30 degree uh, bit. Links to all the bits and tools I use are down below uh, if interested, but this adds a lot more detail. So here I'm cutting the plug. And so a 60 degree bit would probably be just fine, uh, but I have this really highly detailed 30 degree bit that I had never used and I finally got to use it. So first um, I went ahead and did the 30 degree um, angle first before doing the big clearance path. Um, pick that tip up um, from, from some other woodworkers on YouTube. And now I'm cutting with that 1 8 inch uh, bit and it's kind of clearing out the full pocket. Uh, I'll leave links down below to some other videos that go through the software and how to go about setting this up with measurements. There is a fair amount to it and uh, I totally use other settings so you can check that out. While I'm here, I cut the juice groove pretty straightforward. And now I'm cutting the plug. Uh, the plug uh, was with that maple. And so this is a mirrored image of the inlay. And again, that same process, I did the 30 degree bit first, then the 1 8 inch, and then I'm cutting the profile pass. Unfortunately, I didn't do the measurements just so, so I need to come up with a bandsaw just to make sure I cut all that extra material so it'll sit uh, flush into uh, the pocket. And so you got your plug and you got your pocket and time to glue. Again, that tight bond three, um, I went ahead and just went heavy. The, the settings that, you know, I'll leave the link to whose video I really relied on. The settings allow for extra glue, squeeze out and all that good stuff. And this worked great with all my test runs. So throw in your glue, get lots of glue in, and then clamps. I had to get this big clamp here for that deep reach because I wanted to make sure it sat in all the way. Uh, some people will use a hydraulic press and other options, uh, but clamps work great. But because this is such a big inlay, uh, I definitely needed that further reach. So that was a really heavy duty clamp that I'm glad I got. Uh, but you know, you can use some other boards here, some calls, just to ensure it's sitting in. Uh, you want it tight because um, there's really no going back once once it's glued in. And so this worked for me and I got great results doing it, doing it this way. So now I'm going to go ahead and add a chamfer, uh, a router profile on the top. I love using chamfers uh, here on end grain boards. You can do a round over, lots of options. Um, but I'm finding that the cordless uh, or handheld router works better than the router table. Sometimes I get some chip out with these end grain boards, but great results. All right, as far as removing the plug, if you have the resaw capacity on your bandsaw, that is a great option. Uh, with the settings, there's space for the blade, it works really well. Uh, so that worked for this test board, great results. However, this board was, was too big, about 14 inches wide. Uh, I had to go back to the CNC. So still using that giant flattening bit, uh, it just saves so much time. I just adjusted the settings to only take a little bit at a time. And I really double checked those measurements to make sure it didn't go too deep. Uh, of course, you know, you gotta have a CNC to do this inlay project anyway, so you probably have this. Uh, but then you're gonna finish up with some sanding. You don't have to have a drum sander. It makes quick work of it. Um, so this kind of flattens it to the most part, but you're still gonna have to remove all those sanding lines. But the drum sander really cleans it up and you can see the inlay is perfect, right? It's just really clean, super detailed, great results. As far as handles, I have a whole video on cutting board handles. You can see some other options, but I really do like just a 45 degree bevel, a heavy chamfer on either side. I will end up adding some rubber feet uh, for this end grain board, uh, just so it's sitting elevated and no water could pool and cause warpage. But anyway, that, that heavy bevel is a great for a little handle. All right, you do have to remember to remove the sanding line. So 80 grit sandpaper here, I got my, my bigger sander uh, to really just remove all those lines. This is a bit monotonous, takes some time, uh, but it's, it's a must, it's a must do. So I'm removing all the lines, add some star bond for any uh, voids that I have, and now I can add my custom message. 
So I've been having a lot of fun uh, with my new laser, the X-Tool P2. Uh, more info on this down below, I got other videos, but this really allows you to add a super custom message. Of course, you could just use a V-Bit with the uh, CNC, but the burning adds a cool effect and it's just so much faster. Um, so thank you message uh, to the family, uh, notes on care for how to care for the board, a little bit more about the board, uh, just really elevates a project and really personalizes it. So lots of great lasers out there, some, some options down below if interested. When it comes to sanding, my world has been just shook. I have this new sander uh, from Surf Prep. Uh, it's just a three inch by four inch rectangle, which just allows for so much more possibilities. Uh, it's just an incredible sander with vibration and all that, and I'm blown away by it. Uh, but their abrasives are, are incredible. So I'm doing my sanding progression again, uh, 80, then 120, then 150, then I raise the grain, I'll do 220. However, the Surf Prep has the foam. They have their Pro Foam inserts a different thickness, which means no hand sanding. On this project, I did zero hand sanding. Uh, no cut pieces of sandpaper, it was just the, the foam, and it was incredible. I was able to clean up juice grooves without hand sanding. Uh, so just offsetting those big foam, kind of folding it over, uh, able to get in, perfect results, amazing results. Um, if you're interested in the surf prep, I got some links down below, discount code. Yes, they're affiliate link, but I love it. I am blown away. You know, I've shelled out, you know, hundreds of my own dollars uh, for more of their abrasives and such, because I just love it. It's incredible, highly recommend it. Uh, game changer when it comes to sanding. Okay, raising the grain. This is a must do in woodworking uh, for cutting boards or things that are gonna come in contact with water for washing. Uh, so I sand it to 150 and now I'm just lightly misting the boards and it's raising all the wood fibers. Then I can sand it down at 220. If I skip this step when the board got washed for the first time, it would be rough to touch and that would just be no bueno. So go ahead, mist it and then sand again, uh, just lightly at 220 here. Um, I'm using the fine, uh, the, the Surf Prep Pro Foam Fine. Again, no hand sanding, great result, super smooth. And uh, then it's ready for finish. Some beautiful, beautiful finish. Here we go. Oh my gosh. Nothing like that walnut reveal. So uh, black walnut with that uh, sapwood contrast and heartwood in there, uh, that hard maple, it's just such a classic combo. Uh, but that end grain, especially doing all those different pieces, it adds just so much complexity and uh, interest. And I just, this is what I envisioned, like I said, for about four to five years, a board like this, and it's exactly what I was hoping for. I know it's dark right now and you can't see the engraving, but it does show up in the end. Um, I'm using mineral oil here. Uh, there's a lot of other food safe finishes. I talk about those different options in some of my other cutting board videos, uh, if you wanna see some different options. Uh, but it works great, uh, mineral oil is great. And then following up with a wax, but just some, oh crazy, crazy natural colors. So uh, I use walrus oil board wax. There's nothing like it. I haven't found anything that has the same results. I use a heat gun just to soften it up. It, it penetrates deeper, a little bit more protection. So go ahead and apply the wax uh, to your boards, let it sit. Sometimes I'll come back and add more depending on how much is penetrated and then buffing it in. I'm actually using that surf prep sander right there. Um, so adding these non-woven pads, uh, it just does great results. That same vibration works great. I've used this, uh, this buffer for years. You've seen that in other videos, that works great too. Uh, but just really happy with how the surf prep worked. Um, you can cut your own and just do ones by hand. I've done that for lots of other finishes, but here, here we go. Uh, these boards just they make me so happy because uh, there's you know a personal connection to them um, it you know represents a lot of work a lot of work and I'm just I'm just really happy with how they turned out it's fun for all the possibilities so in uh, end grain inlay boards uh, are pretty fun but uh, how they turned out and here you can still see that engraving uh, still stands out Great way to add in uh, some directions for care to ensure your board doesn't fail, but there you have it. And there you have it, how to make an end grain cutting board with wood inlay. Hopefully this video helped you, inspired you in some way. If it, 
If it added any value, please consider subscribing to see more videos like this, uh, whether it is CNC work or laser work or the more traditional tools, which I have quite a few videos like that and you, you'll definitely see those on the channel and in the future. If you're curious about any of the tools I used or some of the supplies, links down below uh, to see more. Uh, of course, you can see more sawdust shenanigans and other projects over on Instagram as well. Uh, really appreciate you watching it. And again, I hope it helped. And until next time, take care.